We're not just gonna tell you how a camera works. Today, we're gonna show you. I'm John P. Welcome to Geek Beat. When it comes time to step up your photography game, you're gonna have to shift out of fully automatic mode. But I know it's intimidating, so today we're gonna explain the most difficult concepts in photography by demonstrating exactly what the various controls do. There are three primary areas of control in photography, each having to do with a different part of the camera. The body, the lens, and the film speed. A change to any one of these variables will necessitate a change to at least one of the other variables because the correct exposure for any given shot is actually a relationship of all three. First, let me explain the three areas of control we can exert over any camera that allows you to put it in manual mode and override the automatic settings. Within the camera body, you can control the shutter speed. This is how long the shutter stays open to expose the film, or in this case, the digital image sensor. Slow shutter speeds in the half second to one second range are often used for low light conditions. An average shutter speed may be in the 1 60th to 1 200th of a second range, and a very fast shutter speed would be used for fast action sports, for example. An IndyCar race speeding by might be captured at 1 2,000th of a second. The longer the shutter is open, the more light is allowed to expose the film or digital image sensor. Now within the lens, you can control the aperture. This is a measure of how much the blades of the lens are open or closed. In a camera lens, the blades basically do the same thing as your eyes when they dilate or contract to handle different light levels. The lower the aperture setting, the larger the opening to allow light. The lowest setting is often referred to as shooting wide open because the blades don't restrict the incoming light at all. Another effect aperture has on shooting is the depth of field. This is the range of the captured image that is actually in focus. A portrait taken with shallow depth of field, for example, would have the subject in focus while the items in the background appear blurred. The blurry effect associated with shallow depth of field is also referred to as bokeh. A portrait taken with a large depth of field will keep everything in focus. The choice of film speed used in a traditional camera is the third major way to have an effect on the image. Film speeds have standard ISO ratings, where lower numbers refer to film associated with slower speed photography, such as portraits or landscapes, and higher ISO speeds are used for fast action images. A high ISO film can capture an exposure much faster than a lower ISO film, but at the expense of image quality. Low ISO film will capture greater detail, but requires more light and or longer exposure times to do so. Digital cameras have ISO equivalent settings that imitate the exact same effect achieved by film cameras. Now it is possible to create similar, but not identical, effects by adjusting different variables within the lens, the body, or the ISO settings. For example, a higher ISO film, or the digital equivalent, is less sensitive to light, resulting in a darker image. Selecting a higher aperture setting will allow less light to reach the sensor, resulting in a darker image. And shooting a faster shutter speed will expose the film or sensor for a shorter time, resulting in a darker image. Although each of those settings might result in the same image brightness, they also have other consequences. Moving to a higher ISO film will create a noisier image with impacted color and more artifacts in the form of graininess. Selecting a higher aperture setting will have a side effect of widening the depth of field. This will bring more of the background into focus. And using a faster shutter speed will have the effect of freezing movement in an image. For subjects in motion, this will potentially remove blur, which may at times be desirable, but other times not so much. So that's really all you need to know when it comes to taking control of your camera. Now that you understand these concepts, switch your camera out of automatic mode and begin experimenting with manual controls. As always, you can drop a question or comment below, or you can tweet me at John Pose. In fact, tweet me for sure if you found this tutorial helpful. And better yet, subscribe to our channel for much more Geek Beat to come. I'm John P. Thanks for watching.